Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another social emotional workshop. We are here today with Care of Southeastern Michigan. Teresa, we're so glad to have you back. Today, you. We're, we're going to be discussing me time and, you know, what's more important right now with everything that's going on, but trying to have some quality me time. Exactly. Teresa, Go ahead and take it away. Okay. I can't share yet. You sure can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> there I go. All righty then. Okay. So as Tony said, we really need this right now because uh, a lot of us are stressed out, you know, and we actually need more of that feeling of stable, stableness because, you know, we are first responders. Uh, we'd like to think of ourselves as a first responder. We want to be focused. If it's our kids or if it's uh, our job, you know, we need to be able to be focused on that and, uh, you know, not be all over the place. So, um, you know, these are going to be some ways that we will be able to help us find that focus. Even if we only have maybe five minutes in the day, we'll be able to find some things here that will be useful, helpful, I hope. And, you know, as usual, um, I'd like you guys to just interrupt if you want, ask questions. I'm okay with that. Uh, eventually, Joe will be here. So if you want to put stuff in the chat, you know, that's okay too. He will answer those or he'll let me know that you're asking questions. So this is your brain on stress. It's not a fried egg, but uh, it could be. That brain on the left is a typical brain. So think your days go on ahead, you know, going along ahead. You might have a little bit stress here and there because of uh, you stress which is different than regular stress. You know, uh, you stress is uh, stress that you get when you have a goal like vacation or, you know, a new job or something like that. There's an end to it. You have to do a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit of stress and planning, but, uh, you know, eventually it all evens out because you're out of that stress. Uh, the other kind of stress is the stress that sticks around all the time. So the brain on your right is a, is a brain that's on high stress. And what happens is, uh, you know, that dark coloration that you see, it goes to your um, old brain that's near your spinal cord. And that old brain keeps your body functioning in case you have to run or in case you have to fight. You know, it keeps your body functioning, your heart beating, your lungs, uh, you know, contracting, expanding, all that good stuff. And so uh, what happens is in the front area there of your brain, where there's usually, you know, blood and, and uh, on, on the typical brain, um, since that blood has gone to your old brain, what happens is you get a, a dump of cortisol, which is a stress chemical. It's not cortisone, like you put on itchy skin, it's cortisol with an L at the end. And because the front part of your brain is, um, has that cortisol dump in it, it's not really um, working the way it should work. And, you know, when you get those stress chemicals, not only in your brain, but you also get them throughout your body, like adrenaline in your arms and legs, because you've got to, you know, you've got to fight or you've got to run in times of high stress. And, you know, instinctually, that's what it's there for. But, you know, of course, we don't really need that to fight. I mean, hopefully, our stress is just about uh, our jobs and our kids and all the hats that we wear. But also, you know, what's going on there is because of those stress chemicals, your heart rate speeds up and your breathing becomes shallow and fast. And if you've ever had an anxiety attack, that's a very uncomfortable feeling. Uh, well, and not only that, but your, your blood sugar levels go up, your blood pressure goes up. Um, 
and uh, your digestion slows down. And so, um, you know, all those things are happening to your body uh, while you're in very high stress levels. And there are people that are constantly in those kinds of really high stress uh, situations. Typically, we get a chance to um, maybe take a break, go for a walk. Those are the me time times. But a lot of people, because of, um, you know, their lifestyle, maybe, or because of what's going on around them, or because of society, they're in a high stress situation all the time. And so, you know, the more that you're in those uh, stressful situations, the more often that you're in there, the more that those stress chemicals do not get out of your body. It takes about three weeks for them to start dissipating out of your body. It only takes about 20 minutes for them to start dissipating out of your brain so that you can start thinking more clearly. But really, it takes about three weeks to get out totally out of your body. And that can lead to a lot of stress-related diseases like heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, and depression. There's a test that we take in one of my parenting classes. It's called a life stress test. And you're supposed to look at your life over the last two years, and then you check off, like if you had uh, a spouse pass away or you know your finances have changed or you've uh, lost your job, whatever, uh, Christmas, um, vacation, and you give yourself uh, a point system. And there are people, well, the, the population that I do this class in is a um, population that has a lot of um, mental health and substance use issues. Uh, it's a court mandated class and they often score way past 300, which puts them at an 80% chance of getting one of these diseases. 90% of unplanned visits are due to stress. So that's, you know, headaches, migraines, back aches, stomach aches. Um, I have IBS and man, that thing can flare when I'm under a lot of stress. Uh, so, you know, this affects your body. And I even went to a um, seminar quite a few years ago when they were talking about uh, infant and uh, mortality among African-Americans, what they found was that um, they couldn't figure out the common denominator. Why were these um, women of color having their babies too early? And why were they at such a low birth weight? Because those things can cause a lot of problems with the baby. And so they checked you know, their income. No, it wasn't really their income. It went across the broad spectrum. Was it where they lived? No, not really. It went across uh, a broad spectrum. Was it their education? No, it wasn't that either. What they found out was it was these little, uh, the stress that they get from these little microaggressions of racism day after day after day. What happens, those stress chemicals affected their pregnancy. It caused uh, their, their uterus, you know, to contract and maybe start um, their, uh, labor early, you know, and it caused the baby's formation to slow down a little bit just because of those chemicals. You know, I just mentioned cortisol and um, the one you get in your muscles. Uh, oh, I just that quick got it. Adrenaline, adrenaline. Um, but, you know, there's more stress chemicals, and that's what messes with your body like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting uh, and sad, really, if you think about it. Um, and so we want to have, uh, you know, uh, more wellness. We need this my, me time so that, you know, we have better problem solving and decision making skills because that front part of your brain that I showed you about that gets that cortisol dump, that's where your decision making skills are, your executive thinking. So if you've got a high dump of cortisol in that area, you're not really thinking the way you should think. And that's why people who are angry, mostly males, will like hit a brick wall or get in a fight without really thinking about it. And then they might hurt themselves and not even realize it because of that cortisol dump in their head. Plus, we, we want healthy coping skills when we're stressed out, you know, like resting or talking to a friend or, um, you know, exercising. We don't want to choose unhealthy skills, coping skills, like eating or shopping, something like that. 
Uh, and we also have to be able to identify our emotions. And you can't do that with that cortisol dump in your head. You can't think clearly. So you can't think about why do I feel this way? I'm so unhappy. I feel like crying. Why? Why am I feeling like I have to cry? Why am I so angry right now? You know, we really have to be able to clarify what it is that's bothering us, the underlying uh, message behind our uh, emotion. And then if we need to, uh, we need to be able to form an assertive communication skill, an I message. I'm feeling really frustrated because uh, I'm getting interrupted a lot. Please hear me out. We also need homeostasis, and that's just that ability to feel internally stable so that things around you aren't uh, affecting you and disturbing you. You know, we need that homeostasis uh, so that we can be those first responders in all of our, um, all of the things that we're encountering every day, all the, all the, um, you know, the things that go on with our job and with our little kids and teenagers and spouses or partners, whatever you got going there. Plus, it's also going to help to help us feel more energized and rested. That all adds to that feeling of homeostasis. So a lot of people don't want to do it because they feel like it's indulgent, like you're being selfish, especially if you really are taking time out uh, at a certain time above any other concerns, like your, like your kids or your partner, where you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to devote a half an hour to taking care of myself because I need it. It's not a reward. It's not something I get to do if I've done everything else well. This is something I need to schedule. Whether I have a half an hour or just 10 minutes, I need to schedule that time because I need it. It's not about ignoring anybody. It's not about ignoring what you have to do. It's about giving yourself that, that feeling of uh, wellness and homeostasis. And so... Uh, one of the things that we have to do here is also be able to set boundaries for ourselves. And I love what these three people say, because a lot of times, you know, uh, we have good boundaries, but sometimes people kind of drive over our boundaries um, because of the things that these three people are going to talk about. So I want to give you guys a chance to hear what they're going to say. Can you hear it, Tony? I heard that you learned in the process yeah. to be able to say, okay. no, I'm not able to do that, which I'm gonna take that line from you. No, I'm, yes. I'm really not able to do that. That is, my, that is my no is a complete sentence sentence, which is, I'm sorry, no, I'm not able to do that. And that's all I say. And it was, it's really hard to say that to people. It's very interesting how, I don't know, wired we are to tell somebody a thousand reasons why we can't do something for them. You know, you say, I can't do it because of this and yeah. this, and as if you're required. To defend your nice niceness. Yes, your to nicehood. defend it. Yes. Right, yeah, I'm a good person, I'm a good I'm person, nice. I want you to think I'm nice, and so I'm gonna tell you why, all the reasons why. So you got that, you figured that out. When people are giving you counsel and people are giving you advice, the vast majority of counsel that you'll get is coming from a place of love and from a place of peace. Yeah. But then understand, at that end, you have to make that decision and be perfectly comfortable with the decision that this is the, in the best interest of me and where I am right now. Yeah. And one thing we know about all the decisions that we make is you are never going to make a decision that 100% of the people say that's a great decision. Ain't that the truth? Never. Yeah. And that's okay. The thing I then try to lean on is with that is don't let people that don't matter too much matter too much. We're worried about what X person thinks or what Y person thinks. I'm like, why do they have so much influence over your decision making or your yeah, life? Yeah. Because the decision that you make is not going to impact them, nor is anything they do should it impact you. So don't let people that don't matter too much matter too much. Don't we do that? Don't we take on other people's stuff and make it about us when we don't know that we matter? When you don't know you matter, you will make somebody else's crazy about you. <laughs> you got your own stuff to handle. You don't have to take on anybody else's. But I made my grandmother's meanness and her crazy and her impatience all about me. And I didn't know that I mattered because I took on what was given to me as my own. We have a tendency to do that. And it was many, many years later, many, many years later, when I understood my grandmother's story, 
You see, we get our meaning and our mattering from our story. And if we tell a story in a way that disempowers us, we won't know that we matter even in the midst of the story. Isn't that great? I love that last woman, Yana Vinzant. If you ever get to watch one of her uh, videos on YouTube, they're wonderful. She's got a lot of great books out too that are very helpful. Um, and I know those things are difficult. It's not always easy to not let somebody else's crazy make you crazy. It's hard to do that, especially if it's you know family uh, that you're dealing with. Um, but you know it's learned. It's a learned thing. I mean, I am uh, 60 years old, and I'm just starting to learn what Ian Levan Sant has said. You know about don't make other people's crazy. You're crazy. Sometimes I think I have a hold of it, and then it just kind of crumbles, and I got to go back to watching her or reading a book or something to get me back to uh, where I should be. So it takes time. And we're going to relapse and then we're going to come back again. But every time you relapse and come back again, um, you're that much stronger. And in the end, it's a positive thing for you to be able to do that. And I love the first woman that uh, Shonda Rhimes said, uh, you know, no can be a complete sentence. Maybe it can't at work, but sometimes in your personal life, you don't have to explain yourself uh, to everybody. And that can be really hard, I know, because that's not what um, society tells us to do. Sometimes it's good for us to do that because somebody else might not think that your excuse or your reason is good enough and they don't have to. It only has to be good enough for you. That's the most important thing. And so uh, I don't know if you guys have ever uh, heard of this before. It's easy enough to find on the web, to uh, in, on the internet. Uh, to find out what your light, your self-love language is. Actually, it's your love language. It's a book written by Gary Chapman, and it's about couples. But he since then has expanded it to include uh, children um, and um, this one here about self-love. You know, like I took that test, and I think it can change a lot. Uh, but I, my, self, my love language is affirmation. So I need positive words. To build myself up because I, I, I laugh about um, this with my friends, but when I used to run um, a long time ago, I remember running down the street and I saw a dead animal on the street, a dog, and I was going through all kinds of stress. Oh my gosh, you know, what do I do when I get there? And what if it's still alive? What do I do? But what if it's dead? Do I just leave it? Do I run away? What do I do? And I was just so like stressed out over it. And when I got there, it was a bag a black uh, garbage bag and like so I stressed myself out over that nothing and um so I try to remind myself sometimes uh one of my positive self-talks uh is uh it's not a dog it's a plastic bag you know when I make those uh effort not affirmation but when I have to talk to myself because I'm making an assumption or uh, I'm stressed out because uh, I'm afraid this person's thinking bad or that person's gonna be upset about me and what choice that I've made. So we need self, positive self-talk. Uh, if your love language is service, then you, know, you should have the right to give yourself what you need in order to um, feel good or take some time off for yourself. Uh, maybe it's just serving a higher power, or maybe it's just you needing some time to uh, take care of your basic needs. If your love language is gifts, invest in yourself, spend money on your hobbies without feeling guilty and uh, have times when you give yourself a gift because you've taken some me time or you've had a good week. Those things are important to you. Um, if your love language is time, then make sure you spend time on things that you love and give yourself solitude uh, if you need it without feeling guilty. And then if your love language is touch, you know, do something that will help you maintain that, like yoga or exercise or um, manicure, pedicure, massage, whatever you need to relieve stress. Um, there's a quiz that you can take. Uh, all you have to do probably is go onto the internet and put uh, love language, Gary Chapman, or even just put love language. And a quiz will pop up and you can find out what it is. 
<coughs> excuse me. So what we need to do, especially this is what something that I got from the curriculum for that court mandated class is I want those people to know after they take that test that you need to take care of these six areas of your life that we're going to go over right now. Because if you don't, you know, you're not going to have the uh, empathy or the energy. Who knows that there are things around you like this mom that needed that need to be taken care of. Uh, you may have empathy for your kids and what needs to be done, but you don't have the energy to do it until you get burned out. So the curriculum says that you need to hit up these six areas every single day, but some of them I, I just can't do and it stresses me out more to try to do them. So I just try to keep in the back of my head that I need to do it at least during the week, but I don't know if I can do creative stuff every single day. That's kind of hard. But anyway, let's just go over them. Uh, this one's pretty basic and we'll all do it. Eating, drinking, bathing, resting, exercise, sleep, eat. Those are things that, you know, that's an area of need that uh, unless you're not alive anymore, you're doing those things. And so I don't know about sleep though. Uh, I don't know about exercise. Those things um, might be something that we need to make sure that we do. I mean, even 10 minutes of exercise, go outside, especially today when the sun's out. And you're going to feel a lot better if you can walk 10 minutes. You don't have to do it for an hour. Uh, the more you can do it, the faster you can do it, the better. But why, you know, why not just do it for your brain, for your soul? Go outside, and get in the sun and take a 10 minute walk. And, you know, we need to have about seven hours of sleep. Again, if you got babies, not always easy to do. If you're a night person, it's going to be real hard to do. But, you know, seven hours can really help you to be able to keep your mind functioning sharply. You know how you feel if you don't get enough sleep, you can't think right, you know, your brain's cloudy. So sleep is really important because that's when your body repairs itself. Uh, and so the more we can get, the better we're gonna end up feeling. Um, another area of need is emotional, to give and receive love and, and to have attachments. You know, for somebody like me that lives alone, uh, my daughter's here right now, but when she's going to be going, uh, leaving in August. Uh, and so after she's gone, I do spend a lot of time alone because I'm an introvert, but I got my dogs and, you know, research has shown that simply petting a dog lowers uh, cortisol in your brain. Um, and if, you know, it's, if you're somebody that needs to have those other people around you, um, that makes you feel happier to be around, uh, friends or just out meeting people, dogs can do that too. They increase social interaction. And, um, they also release that feel good hormone in your brain called oxytocin. Uh, those areas in your brain that shoot off those feel good chemicals, um, dogs can help you do that. Uh, another area is social, and uh, I think that's why um, we had so much trouble during the shutdown when we were uh, quarantined, uh, because it's hard for people not to be around their friends. You know, they're, um, for a lot of people, I shouldn't say everybody, but, um, you know, life is better when you know you have people that you can get together with, even if you just call them on the phone, take five minutes to call somebody. And just say, hi, how you doing? You know, hearing that other person knowing that they're there is, is good for you. Or the social interaction we get on, um, you know, Facebook or social media can help if you're stuck inside. Stimulate your brain, you know, um, doing puzzles, uh, Wordle, <laughs> or, uh, you know, words with friends or those Sudoku things that you can do. Uh, those are really um, good to do or just even talking about uh, current affairs. Like a lot of people don't like to do that. They don't want to talk about current affairs. They don't want to talk about politics. I actually need that. Um, I can't, I tried. I love Wordle too, Melissa. <laughs> um, although it frustrates me sometimes. The other day I fell asleep trying to figure it out, took a nap and woke up and had to do it. Anyway, I'm sorry. So uh, I tried to stay away from talking about politics and watching the news and it drove me crazy. You know, I needed to know what was going on. Um, and so I just limited my time with it. And um, 
I didn't talk about it on Facebook. That helped a lot. You know, just being informed is actually what I needed. And I don't like the way that um, I feel when I don't have, um, when I'm not stimulating my brain, when I'm not thinking about other things um, besides what I have to think about every day, which is work. And next one is uh, spirituality. Um, and so some people get that with church, which don't have to. Um, spirituality could just be um, connecting with things other than material or physical things. So it could be helping other people. You know, it could be volunteering. Yeah. It could be uh, just, you know, being that kind face and those kind words uh, in a world right now that seems so um, in the negative column on kindness, you might be that person uh, that makes somebody else feel good. Um, that doesn't seem like spirituality, but it is. It's thinking about somebody else besides yourself and doing it for the common good. There's a skill that Joe and I um, teach in our parenting classes. Well, any you know, anytime you go for any kind of uh, growth classes, you learn skills, and that's validation. People just want to be validated. And so when I was first going to the parenting classes, it's one of the things that I learned um, that I found really worked with my kids that convinced me that this parenting class wasn't crazy is I went home and I re used reflective listening with my son. He was only like four, I think, at the time. And he really responded to, well to that. He just wanted somebody to understand that he missed his daddy when his dad went to work in the morning. And I'd been like basically telling him to get over it, not using those words, but it's kind of what I, the meaning of what I said. And even at four, he felt that. And so when I went to the class and I found out about reflective listening, I said, you, you sound like you feel really sad because you miss your daddy. And he said, yeah. And we actually had a calm morning. Well, the thing about that is that, that skill is it works for a lot of people. Um, I wanted to try it out on an adult at the time, which was uh, way before my divorce, way before my mom had dementia, which it worked brilliantly in those two things. But um, I tried it out at a lady who was a cashier at Meyer. She just looked really angry. And I can imagine, she's probably not a people person like me. <laughs> she doesn't deal with the public all day long. So when I got up there, I said, looks like you're having a rough day today. And her body like kind of shrunk a little bit, like, Somebody gets that, you know, somebody's not going to yell at me because I'm not moving fast enough. And so that's like a spiritual thing. You know, it's like thinking about somebody else, even though I don't know them. You know, I can't say that I do that all the time, but that's part of, part of spirituality too. <clears throat> and creativity. This is the one that sometimes I have a hard time with. I'd like to be more creative, maybe in the way I dress or, you know, the talents that I have. Um, but uh, I'm not really that good at it. I don't draw, I don't write, I don't um, um, sing, but I do love music. I used to play the piano. Maybe that would be something that I could look into again. Um, it's just something that, uh, you know, it, it, a way for you to express yourself. I used to do that uh, happy color on uh, an app on my phone. And then I got bored with it. But that was a way to be creative a little bit during the day <clears throat> or at night when I was trying to settle my brain down. And the reason that we need to, to have these needs met is because a lot of times we are doing things that we don't really value. So think about the quarantine period, like I mentioned earlier. You know, um, I value my alone time because I'm an introvert and I was forced to practice it a lot, which you know worked really well for me. I think I'm probably the only person that was happy with quarantine because I got to stay home with my dogs. And so I felt happy. I didn't feel a need to go out there and see people. It starts a small dog, which I hate so much, but there are people that really, that are intro extroverted. And that, you know, they value um, social interactions, but they couldn't practice it. And so it was making them very stressed out. It was making them feel sad, possibly depressed, and needing some mental health help, 
you know, from a professional. And so that's what can happen, you know, in these different uh, areas. Think about physical. If you don't get the sleep that you need, you know, that's going to affect you. And um, if you do get the, uh, if you value sleep and you didn't do get to practice it at least seven hours, you're going to feel so much better. So all those areas are going to be affected um, by how much you value them versus how much you actually practice them. So that creative one, you know, I don't value it that much. Uh, so not practicing it doesn't bother me. It would drive my sister insane because she's very creative. She's an artist. And uh, I can tell when she's really tense and like she wants to draw something or she has to keep her hands busy, you know, and um, she likes to uh, get that stuff that you uh, carve with, not clay, but I don't know, it doesn't matter. But she's always like making miniatures of stuff because in painting, it's something that she can do. So, um, you know, think about your six areas of needs. What do you what do you do in those areas and how much do you value them and then practice them? And that might just be where you need to make a change. If you're not doing regularly what you value highly. So what are some barriers? Okay, uh, parenting. I've got three or four kids or I've got really small kids or just kids in general, you know, um, also with my job. But you can't be the best parent that you can be if, you know, you're empty. If you're, your well is empty, there's not going to be anything for you to draw from. Um, a lot of people uh, experience guilt. <clears throat> and uh, it might not even be what society is telling you, but it might be ingrained in your brain from your parents. So I would ask you to challenge that. You know, is it so horrible? If I ask my partner to make dinner so that I can go and run or I can go exercise and I don't eat on Wednesday nights with my kids and my partner so that I can work out, you know, some of us might have in our brain, you have to be there sitting at the table with them. You know, you're allowed to take time out for yourself. So challenge those questions when they pop into your head. If really, do I really have to feel guilty about this? Uh, a lot of people will make an excuse, one more thing to do, and I don't have time. Well, we're going to go through that one in a minute. Um, not knowing what you like uh, or afraid of being by yourself. You know, what do I do? What if I want to go out and I don't, to a restaurant? I don't have anybody to go with me, but I don't want to cook tonight. And I want to go somewhere nice. I haven't had Mediterranean food in a while and I want some. You know, but it might be hard for people to do that because they feel funny being alone in a restaurant. Or like I said, they might not know what they want to do. So go out and try something. You don't have to love it. If you don't like running, there's other a hundred other things you can do. If you don't like reading, there's a hundred other things you can do, but try it. You know, I think that's one of my problems is that I was never um, the type of person to have a hobby. Um, and now I'm, you know, besides reading, I'd like to have another one. I just don't know what to do. And I always like think these things in my head. Well, I, I'm probably not going to be any good at the piano anytime anymore. I hated it when I was little going to practice. Well, maybe I won't feel that way. I just have to go out and try it. If I don't like it. Okay. You don't have to do it. Nobody's going to force you. Um, and then do what works for you. Don't do what other people do. Uh, whatever is going to make you feel calm and rested and give you that feeling of homeostasis, that's what you need to do. Oh, uh, Melissa said, I taught myself to crochet using YouTube videos. That's pretty cool, Melissa. I might think about that for piano lessons. I know my son taught himself how to play the guitar uh, with YouTube. So good idea. I didn't even think of that. Even though Luke did that, I didn't even think of it for myself. Yeah, there's tons of stuff that you could learn on the internet. That's the beauty of it, I guess. Uh, last one there, the superhero mentality that you have to be all things to all people and you don't. That's a hard one for most people um, because of the fact that it's kind of drilled into our heads. Just go on Facebook and look at what you're seeing people post. That ought to tell you how important it is to have that superhero mentality. Um, 
I never see anybody. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into that, but I was going to talk about Wordle again, but I won't, I won't, I won't. but um, very rarely do I pe see people admitting on Facebook or social media that it's hard for them to achieve something. They don't mind writing, you know, so-and-so sick, my dad's sick or my mom's sick or my partner, um, you know, but I never see anybody talk about admitting that they're having trouble parenting their kids, unless it's a site specifically for that. You know, we have to put on that super parent mentality. You know, very rarely, I do see people talking about how burned out they are at their job, but not that much. So we have to get over that superhero mentality. You don't have to be all things. It's okay to not be perfect. So we have to learn how to relax our mind and body. And a lot of people will say, I don't have time to do this. Well, you know what? The average person watches about five hours of TV per day. I'd say even more if they're marathoning something. Two and a half hours of social media per day. So we can take out a half an hour out of that time or 15 minutes out of that time for, our, for ourselves. We just have to make ourselves do it. You have to schedule it in to your planner or you have to write it on your calendar or you have to put an alarm into your phone to remember to do those things for yourself uh, so that you don't end up sitting and watching five hours of TV a day. Uh, that's how you find time to do this. Because like I said, it doesn't have to be a half an hour. It could be five minutes. You could start off with that. And if that's working really well, you can add, you can double the time or just add five minutes to it or two minutes. Um, the average person, I thought this was horrible, has 60,000 thoughts a day and 80% of them are negative. So it's no wonder that we feel we're not living up to that uh, superhero mentality or that we're stressed out uh, because we're telling ourselves, just like the, uh, you know, the dog in the black bag, we're telling ourselves that we're doing a terrible job. We can have 500 uh, things happen to us or 500 thoughts a day. And, um, you know, one of them will be negative. You do one thing wrong and you're going to hyper focus on that and beat yourself up over it. <clears throat> and so we need to get out of that. And, you know, these are some, this was on a sheet that I got when I went to a therapist because, yeah, I'm guilty of beating myself up. Joe will tell you that, but don't ask him because he'll go on and on about it. But, you know, my therapist one time gave me a, a list and I put some of them on here right now because I thought these were great. You know, just change the way that you're talking to yourself. Um, you know, when you're, when you're in the hospital and the nurse comes in to check on you, um, he or she will say, uh, what's your level of discomfort today? They don't say what's your level of pain, at least in my experience, they don't. Because I don't think they want you, I don't think they want to set up that uh, frame of mind for you. They want you to think about it more as a discomfort rather than um, uh, a pain. And there's this little activity I do um, where it'd be hard for us to do it. But in my parenting class, when I'm trying to explain this to people, there's this activity I do. And I'll say, um, okay, I want all of you to say the word shop, S H O P, like, you know going shopping. Why don't you say the word shop five times out loud? So they do that. And then I say, um, okay, spell shop for me five times out loud. And they do that. And then I ask them to say it out loud again. And then as soon as they're done saying that, I say, what do you do at a green light? And they say, stop. And it's just a trick, you know, because they're already in that mentality of, you know, that word. And so the first thing that pops into their head for a green light is stop. Once in a great while, I will actually have somebody say go, but not very, not very much. So uh, my favorite one's not on this list, but what I always say to myself when I'm having a lot of trouble is um, I always land on my feet. That's true. Even if it's a bad uh, outcome or consequence, I'm still alive. I'm still breathing, I'm not disabled. Um, I, I can go to work. I, I have a job, so I am landing on my feet. Um, but there's a lot in here that you can look at or make up for yourself. Uh, even though right now I feel low and sad, I will feel happy again. Those are things that you could say to yourself. I'm, I'm afraid right now, but I'm strong and I can do this. 
whatever works for you. Some of these might be cheesy, but some of them, uh, you know, might help you to feel better, get you out of that frame at work in your head of, oh, I can't, and get you into a new framework of, I can. Yeah, Joe says, this too shall pass. Yes, true. Everything's going to pass uh, and you'll feel better. And if you don't, you can get help. You can always get help. So if you've only got five or 10 minutes, you can sit on the porch with a cup of coffee. Boy, when the weather's nice, I let the dogs out. I sit on the front porch with them. If my daughter's home, she sits with me and we drink coffee. And that's such a nice way to start the day. I love that, especially in the summer, because I get up at about five o'clock in the morning and I love to be outside in the summer and watch the sun coming up. You can call somebody and talk to them. Not about a project, not about something you got to do. Just talk to them, just babble, vent. Let that other person vent and, uh, you know, or get a promise to talk even longer later tonight or get up and move around and walk around. Uh, that can free you up and get that oxygen in your head. Sometimes like uh, I don't like to sit and do that marathon thing, uh, but sometimes I can't help myself. And so I set an alarm. I know this sounds really cheesy, but I read this thing about uh, people who sit for long, long periods of time. Um, they can enter into that state when they're older, where they're not very mobile, when they have a, a problems with mobility. And, you know, so I, if I'm going to be sitting in front of the um, TV for a long period of time, I set my alarm on my phone for every half an hour to remind me to get up and, and move around. So like I'll stand uh, in the back of the room and do half jacks or I'll go walk around, stop the, stop the series and walk around a little bit for a few seconds and then go back and sit down again, just so you're moving. So you're not sitting there and stagnating. Uh, if you've got about 10 minutes, do some deep breathing exercise. Um, if you can meditate, that's wonderful. Um, but just uh, do that four square be breathing, you know, where you breathe into the count of four through your nose and hold it for a count of four and then um, release it through your mouth at a, through, with a count of four. And then don't do anything for a count of four and then do it again. And deep breathing really does help. You know, I get when I'm going to do a presentation in, in face to face in front of a lot of people, you know, after 30 years, I still get butterflies in my stomach because I'm supposed to, because, you know, I want to do a good job. Um, but that deep breathing really helps me a lot because it helps me to focus on county. It helps me to focus on my, the sound of my breath. And so I'm not like overthinking too much. I'm not looking at a bag and thinking it's a dog or I'm not, uh, you know, going off the deep end with, what if I make a mistake? What if I stumble? What if I stutter? Or just put an iPod on and listen to music. Uh, while you're with walking your dog or don't put your iPod on and listen to music. Um, just watch your dog act like a goofball on your walk. <clears throat> and that brings you into the moment. Sometimes if I really, I'm really, really stressed out, I'll take, I purposely take my dog for a, a walk, even if they've already had one. And I will do that thing that you're supposed to do when you have um, anxiety. You know, what are four things that I see? What are three things that I hear? What are two things that I smell? What's one thing that I taste? Whatever. Um, those things keep you present and in the moment too. That can help you calm down. Um, if you've got 15 to 30 minutes, you can read a chapter of a book or a magazine that you like, not for work. Uh, go to a park and go for a brisk walk. Um, outside's good for your soul. Uh, better than walking on a treadmill. But if that's the only thing you got, then do that too. Soak in a tub. Uh, if you have small kids, just make sure somebody's there um, to watch your kids so that you don't hear mommy, mommy, mommy at the door all the time. And uh, keep yourself hydrated, whatever works for you. <clears throat> but a bath is a great way to unwind. When I was pregnant, that's what I used to do all the time, is just sit in a tub until, and read until the water got cold. Um, if you've got more than 30 minutes, you can get a massage or a facial or a mani-pedi. You could take a walk, I mean, take a nap or a walk. That's a great, that's a nice one, a nice long walk for 30 to 60 minutes. Um, we used to take an hour walk in the summer, me and my dogs. I would, because I get up at five, 
So I got time before work and I would go for an hour walk and cover probably about three miles. And when it got cold, it was the first thing I missed. I, I just kept thinking about what it's like to walk that long and how good you feel when you get home. Um, or take a class that you always wanted to take. Uh, now you got some time, you got a, over 30 minutes. So do something just for fun, something that you like. And so here's a, a lot of resources. Uh, these I got from Joe. I haven't actually looked at all of them, but you know, care, care can give you a lot of resources. I told you that uh, you know, if you feel yourself getting sad and things aren't working to help you feel better, you can call care. <clears throat> Even if you don't live in Macomb County, you know, we can help you with uh, resources in other counties because we don't just have to give referrals for um, our programs. We'll give a, you know, anybody referrals. And we also have, um, we have a, like a satellite office. Uh, it's called RUC, Recovery United Community Center. And a lot of times they have uh, support groups geared towards people who are in recovery, but they also have meditation and yoga classes there too. And I asked one time, you know, do you have to be in recovery to go? And they said, no, you don't have to, you can go. Um, Mental Health Network has, uh, always has good resources. Um, the Right Connections has a lot of good resources. You just have to click on what you need. And, um, you know, they give you a whole list of things where you can get help and support. You can click on those. And uh, I'm not familiar with a lot of these. Um, maybe Joe can talk about some of them because he's looked at all of these. Um, like yeah. uh, that yeah. gym. What's that about, Joe? The Mood yeah. Gym. The Mood Gym. I think there's a fee. It's an app on the phone. I heard good things about it. Some friends um, use it. But I don't do any um, fee, you know, I just do all the free stuff. But My Strength um, is a really good app. This is a Macomb County mental health um, grant that they have. And you can see the access code. You go to mystrength.com and to sign up, you put this code MCCMH. And then you get that. So it's every day you visit it, you know, it gives you an assessment. You can watch some breathing exercises. So it's all kinds of uh, health and wellness tools. And it's totally free. I really like that app. Headspace, I believe this is on uh, Netflix or something, where you can go and, you know, get some um, stress relief uh, skills, some breathing exercises. They have all kinds of things on. Uh, mental health and wellness and you know they have little educational things or little activities and then the rest are resources you know like the uh, CDC and the National Institute of Mental Health. Uh, NAMI is a good website it's a national alliance of mental health or illness you can click on any disorders it'll give you the um, risk factors, protective factors, signs and symptoms, and then some tools on how to manage some of those uh, challenges. And of course, Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. It's a pretty well-rounded um, substance use and mental health website there. In the ADAA, that's the Anxiety Depression, uh, Anxiety Depression Association of America really great websites just to kind of uh, get a little education as well as resources and tools. You know what too is um, there's a site psychology today. Um, you can go on there and look for a therapist based on what you need. Cause I was on there look, once looking for um, a therapist that uses um, oh, what's that called CBT, I think cognitive behavioral therapy. <clears throat> and so I could look that way, you know, and then they also, you can figure out who, like if they accept your insurance, but care can also help you with that too. If you live in the county, they can help you figure that out. Um, but also yeah, all you gotta do is call the number on the back of your card that will tell you too. So it's always a good thing to ask for help when you need it. And so there's the care information. Um, if you are looking for that kind of help. 
you want to call that uh, 541 CARE, which is 2273, or you can go on our website. It's where a lot of the programs are listed. And, um, you know, the RUC calendar is on there too, um, our conference that's coming up. So there's a lot uh, of things that you can find on there on the CARE website. So any questions or comments or thoughts on today? What we talked about today? You guys have the ability to unmute yourselves. You can just unmute and ask, or you can type your question into the chat. And also don't forget to use the link in the chat to go to the sign-in sheet and sign in. You're welcome, Jamie. You're welcome, everybody. Uh, if you think of something, hey Tony, I got I got a here. So that's my son in the background. I got here a little a couple minutes late. Can you throw the sign in back in the chat for me, please? So if you think of anything, you know, afterwards, you can always reach out to Joe or I. We have, um, you know, Tony has our email address. You guys, I did read the book Love Languages, and it is an excellent book. It gives you a lot of insight as to who you are as a, as a person. But additionally, it helps you have better relationships with the people in your lives because you can then identify their love language and be more effective in your communication and how you relate to other people. It really is a good book. Yeah, it is. And like I said, they've branched out to include a lot of different things like your kids or yourself. It's and, a great book. This has just been um, very helpful in that uh, in Step Up, Beth talked about uh, self-care and she is, you know, she was kind of drilled it in us today about self-care and this just really builds upon you know the things that she talked about with us needing to you know do for ourselves so it's it's definitely been very helpful um and and helping with the foundation well good excellent glad to hear that Well, you guys, if there aren't any more questions or comments, we will bring this to a close. Thank you so much, Teresa and Joe. Um, great presentation as always. And thank you guys for joining. And we will see you on Thursday. And uh -huh. Thursday, we will be talking about um, ages and stages. Correct, Teresa, Joe? Yes, we will. And I've also like uh, most people think of ages and stages as being like birth to five, but I've also included um, uh, adolescents and young adults in that too. So it'll be uh, all age groups. Good deal. Again, thank you guys so much and everybody have a great day. Thanks. You, you too. too. Thank you.